A lot of people say time heals all wounds. I think that's a lie. I think time buries wounds. And when something else happens, the enemy brings it to the surface. That old wound brings, brings it to the surface and aggregates it with the current offense and hurt. I believe time doesn't heal anything. My experience has been that mercy heals everything and it can happen in a moment. So you all have been given a legal pad and on the front of that legal pad, it says confidential and attorney client privilege because this is your charging document. So you put your name there because you own this. And if you want to engage in this process, all you need to do is ask the Holy Spirit to be your lawyer. He's a really, really good lawyer. And he will help you to uh, release Jesus' mercy to pay for the debts that have been created by people's sins against you. He will also help you to apply his mercy to pay for the debts that have been created by your own sin. It's a pretty incredible process and it happens like that. And I've seen people get set free from so many things that they've been trying to get set free from for years and years and years and lots of therapy and lots of tears and lots of pain. But there's just something powerful about this spiritual transaction that allows that debt to get paid for and the enemy's access to us completely cut off. So what I would challenge each of one of you to do is to flip open, after you put your name on the front, is to flip open to the first page and to list every single name, just their name, just their first name, of every single person that the Holy Spirit has brought to your attention as you've been sitting here today listening. I have never had anybody tell me that nobody has come to mind. So if that's any of you, you'd be the first. But I would encourage you to write down every name, just list out every single name. And after you're done doing that, what I would encourage and challenge you to do is to flip to the next page and to write one of those names that you had written on that first page at the top and then ask the Holy Spirit to help you articulate the charges against that person. What have they done to you? It's really important to dig deep and get these charges accurate and try to get them complete so you don't have to summon them back and do another trial. Um, I think, you know, if you guys wanted to pair up, you can give your partner, and don't pair up with somebody that's on your list, by the way. <laughs> that would not be good. Um, but you can give, if, you, if you're struggling with articulating the charges, you can give that person like the high level. You know, you're not pouring out your emotions because it's like you, they're, they're just being like the legal assistant to the Holy Spirit, okay? So just like if you came into my office, you wouldn't come, you know, telling me, woe is me about all of the horrible things. Um, and, you know, emotions, you just give the facts, what happened. And it's amazing how the enemy tries to make um, emotions, you know, so confused and muddled. But when you really start writing down the charges, it usually just boils down to a few charges against that person. What did they do to you that was different than how they would have wanted to have been treated themselves? because that is the injustice that's been committed against you. And then on the very back two pages of that notebook, if you flip to the very back, you're gonna see three sample prayers. The first one is a prayer to lead you in releasing mercy over the perpetrators in your life. The second one is releasing mercy over yourself when there's been prolonged unforgiveness, because that's a sin too. And then there's releasing mercy over yourself for your own sin. If you want to break the power of condemnation and accusation of the enemy off of you, and if you want to plea the blood of Jesus and shut the mouth of the accuser against you so he has no legal right to continue to harass you and torment you because of your own sin, pray that prayer. 
and you will see a transaction happen in the heavenly realms that will rock you on earth. It will bring you to another level of freedom because um, we don't have to keep letting the enemy harass us. Once that debt has been paid for, there is no legal basis for the enemy to be able to continue to harass you. Because again, every bit of condemning evidence against you is canceled. That's really good news. So I would encourage you. Yeah. Question. yeah. Um, I think you kind of answered it, but when we're writing like the specifics, is it um, like, let's say for the, the girl that was molested, like would she just write like that or would she write more details than that? You know, um, it depends on how the Holy Spirit leads you, I think. But okay. like I, I prayed with a, with a woman who was um, jumped by a bunch of guys when she was like 10 years old. And um, they tore her hair out and they punched her and they kicked her. Um, and she wrote down every single thing that they did to her. And um, she, those were the charges against her. Some people find it easier to be more general, like, you violated me. Um, yeah. But however the Holy Spirit leads you. But once you have conducted your trial... Can I use your notebook real quick? Mm -hmm. I promise I won't look at anything written. I, I asked the Lord, okay, what do you do with this, these charging documents? You know, afterwards, you leave them here so that you can remember? And the Lord was like, no. No, the Bible says you're supposed to keep no record of wrongs. So once it's done and this person or you have been acquitted and forgiven and free, it's done. You got no business keeping a record of it anymore. The freedom you will find in doing this will rock you if it's anything like what's happened to me and what has happened to so many others who've um, decided to utilize this tool of mercy. Um, the more you make this a daily practice, you will find yourself living, living unburdened and valuing your freedom more highly than you value your pride. I was with a young woman once whose ex-husband had decided to use her as a punching bag. And he broke bones, he gave her concussions, he knocked her out unconscious on multiple occasions. And she said she wanted to conduct this trial against him, ultimately for him. And um, the other people that were there with her she wanted to do it with everybody. And so they just, I didn't lead anybody in anything. They just, um, they led her. And when she was done um, releasing mercy over this ex-husband, everybody in the room just burst out and applauded and cheered. And she said, I feel so different. And I was like, well, can you describe how you feel? And she said, yeah, I feel light. I feel unburdened. And that has been my experience, too, is that, you know, the enemy loves to pile weight on us and um, hard feelings. And if it's our own sin, shame and condemnation. Um, and it's with, if it's with other people's sin, <coughs> loves to keep reminding us of all of those pain, all that pain and, and um, how they treated us and harass us with that. And that is a weight that we're not designed to bear. I don't care how big and bulky and broad your shoulders are. You were not designed to bear that weight. God wants you free. You know, he came to set the captives free. He came so that we could have life and have it more abundantly. And when you make this your lifestyle for a while, maybe some days, maybe some weeks, you're going to be in court a lot <laughs> because you, the, Lord, the Holy Spirit is going to remind you of a lot of things that people have done to you that are still in you and have where the enemy's been able to get his hooks pretty deeply infested um, in you and, and you gotta extract those. But again, it can happen like that in a moment. And the more you do this, the more it becomes second nature. So when somebody commits this, an injustice against you, it's, it just is like, it becomes really easy to identify. Like you so, I've come to so love my freedom that I can really sense now when the enemy's trying to get his hooks in me, and I'm like, oh no, 
<laughs> no, 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 no. And I just identify that charge quickly and I release Jesus' mercy over that. And I declare that person forgiven and acquitted and free and it's done. And then it doesn't harass me and chase me around anymore. And I get to maintain my freedom and my lightness. And the other thing that it does is that it allows me to get on with the important business of why God put me on planet Earth. You know, God put each and every one of you guys on planet Earth and he gave each and every one of you the specific gifts and talents that only you have and specific mission and purpose that only you can fulfill. And you've got a vapor to do it. You know, that's not a long time. And so we got to stop wasting our time being under the enemy's oppression and realize how powerful we are and how much the enemy wants to keep us down and, and oppressed. Um, but God wants to set us free so that we can fulfill the plans and purposes that he put us on planet Earth to do. Because I don't know about you guys, but when I'm face to face with Jesus, I would like for him to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You know, all of us have a heavenly resume that's already been written. And when we're face to face with Jesus, is our life going to match what has already been established for us? I mean, the Bible says that every moment of our life has been written in his ancient books since before time began. So, you know, our job is to figure out why we're here and to accomplish the things that God has given us to accomplish. We can't do that when we're defeated. We can't do that when we're burdened. We can't do that when we're condemned or ashamed or accused. God wants to set us free from all of that. And Jesus has given us the tools to do it. And that's the good news.